So 2022 is shaping up to be a fantastic year for airliner development in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We've been getting tons of news from accredited developers such as PMDG and Phoenix and Aerosoft, but at the same time, new developers are also coming into the spotlight by creating some fantastic new projects for us simmers to enjoy. So we're going to be taking a look at all of this in this video. So stay tuned. What's going on guys, Flyby Simulations here and welcome back to another video and boy oh boy, I took one week off of Microsoft Flight Simulator development videos and it was the most heavy week for development. We got some new video footage for the 737, the PMDG 737 that's going to be coming for the simulator. A 757 has been announced, Concorde release date has been set for March. There's tons of new stuff and probably the worst week for me to take off but unfortunately I couldn't do anything because I had midterms so um, I'm super excited to be back and in this video, as I said, we're going to be taking a look at all of the airliners that are going to be released for Microsoft Flight Simulator very, very shortly. So if you guys haven't already yet, please make sure to give this video a like, maybe subscribe to the channel and also join my Discord server, which is linked down in the description section of this video. We're up to around 80 members now, which is fantastic. We're creating a real community out there. So if you guys want to get involved and really intimately get involved with the ongoings of the channel here, make sure to get involved down in the Discord server as well. Again, it's linked to down in the description section of the video. So, without further ado, let's check out all of the airliners coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so what better aircraft to start off with than the PMDG 737? Now, I normally extensively cover this aircraft on this channel because of how highly anticipated it is by the community, so you guys can check out some of the latest development updates that are either linked to down in the description section of the video or on the top right hand corner of the screen. But again, the footage you guys are seeing in the background right now actually is courtesy of PMDG themselves who have released a 5 minute sort of trailer teaser of the 737-700 variant in the simulator later itself. Now, the aircraft is slated to be a study level simulation of the 737, it's PMDG. So for those of you who don't know, PMDG is a very highly accredited developer who creates very detailed and comprehensive simulations of various Boeing aircraft for prior simulators and they're bringing their suite of aircraft into Microsoft Flight Simulator now through the 737. Now, the initial variant that is going to be coming, as I said before, is going to be the 737-700 variant. Now, this is a less popular variant of the 737-NG family, but on the positive side, it shares the exact same cockpit configuration as any other aircraft in the NG family. So, if you guys want to get a little bit of practice in on the 737-700 before the more popular-800 variant drops later on, be sure to get this aircraft. Now, as I said, the 737-800 variant will be coming right after the release of the Dash 700 variant. And the reason PMDG have decided to sort of compartmentalize the release of their various sort of variants of the aircraft is because they want every consumer to be able to have the right to choose what aircraft they want to fly. Now, previously, you had to purchase the 737-800 base package and then have to buy the 900 or the 700, depending on if you wanted those. But now you can purchase each of these aircraft separately, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be discounts codes available uh, if you have another variant purchased already. The aircraft has indeed entered beta as of last week and the dev team are resolving last minute issues and bugs as we speak. In fact, according to the latest development that they've issued, the PMDG development team have tackled up to 79 of the 140 odd issues that were issued by the beta team. So that's pretty good news and pretty good progress that they're making. Hopefully we can see the aircraft gracing our simulators very, very shortly. We will also start hearing from beta testers later this week, which means we're going to be getting some hard performance numbers. We're going to be getting some good quality feedback from the beta team who have actually had the opportunity to test this aircraft in the sim, just like we're going to be doing, as well as new images and videos and so on. So again, very exciting stuff. And the PMDG 737 is indeed shaping up to be a fantastic airliner that should be coming very, very shortly for the simulator. Now, as for the projected release date, I personally predict this to come sometime in Q2 of this year which means between March and probably May or June. PMDG is known to take their time with their betas. They're not a dev team that like to release an inferior product and then patch it with updates like some other ones that I'm not going to mention right now. They normally are known for uh, releasing a complete and superior product and then improving it with updates if necessary. So I'm super excited about this and I hope uh, we can get our hands on the PMDG 737 as soon as possible. So that's one. We, I think, have six more to go in terms of the airliners that are going to come for Microsoft Flight 
Flight Simulator, so stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so next up, we have a very exciting developer who is relatively new in the development space itself, but their vision for the future of Microsoft Flight Simulator is absolutely jaw-dropping, as I see on their Discord server all the time. I'm, of course, talking about the Phoenix Sim A320, who are creating a study-level A320, but they're creating a CFM version of the A320, which is not to be confused with the NEO, or New Engine Option variant for the Sim. Now, for those wondering why they're even doing this, considering the fly-by-wire A32NX mod already exists for the sim that has greatly improved upon the original A320 that was available with the base package of the simulator, well, the Phoenix Sim A320 is meant to be a next-level, detailed, and comprehensive simulation of the A320, adding functionality for various niche subsystems, options to try out failures, custom Airbus flight logic, and much, much more, so it's going to be on another level. Now, that's not to say that I hate the fly-by-wire A320 that already exists for the sim. I absolutely love that aircraft. In fact, if you go and check out any of my full flight episodes, you'll see how much I love that aircraft. It made the original A320 Neo that was shipped with the base simulator flyable, and eventually it became a separate aircraft that now has custom VNAV and LNAV capabilities and much more. But I have to say from the previews and from the feature discovery sort of uh, snapshots that uh, Amir has provided on their website, um, the Phoenix A320 is going to be on another level, man. Honestly, it definitely occupies a deserved seat next to all the upcoming airliners and is definitely something for the sim community to be extremely excited about in the future. Now, as for the progress of the aircraft itself, it has indeed entered beta recently. It's being tested by people who have no experience with Airbus as well as professional A320 pilots alike, which creates an experience that is enjoyable for everybody. Now, there isn't any projected release date yet, but we're expecting something in maybe Q2 or Q3 of this year. So sometime later this year, once beta testing has uh, finished and once Amir, who is a fantastic developer, who's very eloquent with how he sort of explains everything as well. Great knowledge of Airbus subsystems and can't wait to learn more from that guy. But um, yeah, from what he says and from what it looks like, it, it's probably shaping up to be a Q2 or Q3 release, most probably. But I'm excited to see it grace our simulators, and I'm also excited to see fly-by-wires development alongside it. Competition, as I've said multiple times before, is obviously fantastic, and you can't beat it. The more competition, the better the products get, and the happier the simmers are in general. So, so that's it for the Phoenix Sim A320. Alright, so speaking of the fly-by-wire team, next up let's talk about their upcoming and highly anticipated A380X project. Now, as the name suggests, it is going to be a freeware A380 for the simulator. Now, with the reputation of the A32NX or the A320neo modification that the fly-by-wire team have done to the base package A320neo that was shipped with the simulator, fly-by-wire have truly set the bar very high. And this is even more so because this is probably the only Airbus aircraft, the A380 of course, that has never properly been realized in any modern simulator. Many people have committed to it, tried, and failed. Like, even Matt Davis is another channel I used to follow back in the day. He was trying to create an A380 for the P3D world as well as the X-Plane world. Never really came to fruition, and I can't be more excited for an A380 coming. Now, the preview images you guys are seeing in the background are from back in December 2021, and right now it's February 21st, which means a lot of development must have happened in the intermediary. The aircraft, of course, looks like it's coming along very, very nicely. The external previews look beautiful and very well modeled. You can see some of the engine cowling details. You can even see some of the fan blade details and the wings and stuff like that in the background. The internal cockpit shots look absolutely jaw-dropping. I'm not gonna lie, this is, this is very exciting stuff. The texturing and the model of individual buttons, the lighting effects that we're seeing, as well as some uh, bespoke animations and features like the custom keyboard that is very representative of an A380 cockpit are all very, very well done. Now, as for it being a high fidelity, high study level simulation aircraft, we don't necessarily know. The release, again, we don't know, we have no idea. Fly-by-wire team have been saying that their primary focus is obviously going to be to convert the A320 that they're working on extensively into a high fidelity study level product. But at the same time, they're also working on this A380 and with the previews we're seeing, it's apparent that a lot of work is being put into this aircraft as well. Now, what we do know is that it's gonna be absolutely for free and it'll 
be open source and supported over the full lifespan of the simulator itself, which means just like the A320, it's going to keep getting better and better and better along with more community engagement, more beta testing and so on. So if you guys want to get involved with the fly-by-wire team, I'll leave a link down in the description section of the video for their Discord server. You can join it if you have any technical experience with the A380. I'm sure they'll appreciate your help. We're probably going to expect this aircraft in 2022, but it could come later as well, so please don't hold me to that. So that's it for the A380 by Fly-By-Wire. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so with the A380 done, on the Airbus front, we have one more aircraft to talk about, which is the Aerosoft A330, which is also going to be coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator. So this was in a forum post that was highlighted by Airsoft talking about the future of aircraft development for them. They said that they're currently developing their Airbus A330 for Microsoft Flight Simulator, but the company's actually already looking to the future and considering what to do after this plane is released. They said that they want to come up with some more engine types for the A330 as it's currently restricted to only the Rolls-Royce engine option, so that's maybe something they're going to be focusing on. However, they also outlined in the forum post that the A318, which is the baby bus affectionately called, or the A319 or the A321, which are all part of the A320 family, could also be future development projects for Airsoft. They said that these two Airbus packs have previously proven to be highly popular with the general simming crowd, despite some of the criticism of the planes being a little simplified. And I highly agree with that statement. I mean, if the A32NX by Fly-By-Wire was the only A320 on the market, maybe you could produce another A320. But to keep going with the same small Airbus trend when there's so many people, so many entrants in the market, is just going to make that market more saturated. And I don't think profits are going to be very high for Aerosoft. So I would highly recommend them focusing on the A330 or maybe some other aircraft like the Beluga or the A340 or something like that. Maybe just, you know, spice things up a little bit. Lastly, Mathis did make two statements that were very saddening personally. They made a statement about the A350 and the A380, simply saying that these will not be developed by Aerosoft. Now, according to the developers, they say that the data for the A350 is simply unavailable, which I don't know how that works because for every other aircraft, there seems to be data available. Even Flight Factor have created an A350 for X-Plane 11, which um, barring most complications does fly pretty well. So I don't know what sort of data these guys are looking for, but apparently if Aerosoft is saying they don't have data, apparently they don't have data. And they say that as for the A380, in no uncertain terms, commercially, that aircraft is about as interesting to them as it is for airlines. Now, I highly disagree with this statement personally. I mean, I'm really glad Fly-By-Wire is creating that A380, but um, I have to say that it's not about commercial success that actually makes it commercially successful in a flight simulation world. I mean, the more options you give us simmers, the more we like your products and the more we actually like your company in general. But uh, yeah, I, I personally think the A380 is something that was a very lucrative market. They could totally create it and it'll generate a lot of hype among the community. Um, people wanted to fly Emirates routes and such long haul routes and luxury routes and stuff like that could totally use the A380, but apparently it's uh, it's too much effort for them or it's just not enough bang for a buck. So they are going to be producing the A330, which should be coming to our simulators by either 2022 or maybe 2023. So exciting news on that front, I guess. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So with all the Airbus aircraft covered, let's get back to some Boeing birds. So Bluebird Simulations, who again, I've never heard that name, have announced their first project for Microsoft Flight Simulator being the Boeing 757 or the pencil in the sky as it's affectionately called. The aircraft is still in the early stages of development and Just Flight will be assisting with the project. Just Flight being another developer who's also actually developing the Concorde that we're going to be talking about in just a second, as well as some sceneries for the simulator. So accredited developer, they have a little bit of reputation and they're going to be helping Bluebird Simulations out with the aircraft. They say that even though systems development has just started, Bluebird has noted that the 757 will be a mid-level complexity aircraft, which will be more complex than the default airliner. So they're not looking to create a study level simulation, but just a basic mid-level complexity simulation. So from a systems perspective, the 757 will be a significant jump forward while still making the 757 accessible to simmers of all skill levels. More exact information on system depth will be released at a later date. An authentic Boeing 757 flight deck experience is the goal, and as we can see from some of the preview images in the background, they're clearly doing that. I mean, the PBR being used on the MCDU here, or the autopilot control panel, is amazing. The FMC looks great, the night lighting shots are looking great, the overhead panel, of course, is also looking very, very nice and very indicative of the 757 overhead panel, so it looks very nice. 
Now, on the flight model side of development, the team noted a real-world Boeing 757 pilot will be assisting in making sure the flight model is as real as possible. Moving over to the exterior, again, we can see some basic sort of modeling that's happening here. Uh, it's again in very early stages of development, clearly. The modeling is actually being completed by just two individuals with decades of experience. Using hundreds of pictures, documents, and pure talent, Bluebird is confident that the exterior modeling of the 757 will be, quote, superb. Included with the 757-200 will be the less popular 757-300 as well. So that's good news. I always love it when we get more variety and more. Um, more variants along with a single release. No information was given if they will be released together or as a separate expansion, however. While the aircraft is relatively in an early stage of development, as can be seen from the external shots here, Bluebird is looking to release the 757 in the first half of 2023. So it's not going to be coming this year uh, unless their uh, development process gets expedited in some way, but it's going to be coming very, very soon in 2023. And again, because it's so early, there is also no indication of pricing, but still very, very exciting news. More Boeing aircraft can complain. All right, so with the Airbus and Boeing aircraft now covered, let's take it way back to the supersonic days with some amazing new release information regarding the Concorde for Microsoft Flight Simulator that is being developed by DC Design and Just Flight in partnership actually with Asobo themselves. Now, the aircraft itself will be a detailed simulation of the Concorde. However, it will not be a study level simulation of the Concorde as some people like to quote unquote call it. The developers do stress, however, that it will be detailed enough that a decent amount of operational knowledge regarding the aircraft will be required to get it from point A to point B. What the devs are really trying to do here is to actually just holistically focus on recreating the Concorde experience instead of just systems depth. Hence why the interior cabin is being modeled with precision and authenticity with even custom bespoke animations to complement the experience such as movable door handles and so on. So they're not just trying to create systems depth, obviously that is the focus, it's still a simulator, but at the same time they're also trying to create an experience out of the Concorde to help their consumers sort of realize the dream of what it used to be like to actually sit in a Concorde and go Mach 2 transatlantic from JFK to Heathrow or something like that. So that's pretty cool. However, as I said, on the system side of things, most switches in the flight will be operational and Mach 2 flight will indeed be possible. Now, fans of the Concorde that actually know the systems inside and out will note the lack of a dedicated INS or an internal navigation system. The reason for this is that the INS system requires custom WASM gauges, which is incompatible with Xbox. And since this aircraft is going to be fully compatible with Xbox on launch, which is very exciting news in and of itself for Xbox and console users, the INS will be actually added at a later date when Xbox is capable of using said WASM gauges. So that's pretty understandable. Currently, the INS is modeled but modified to operate as more of a digital entry display so users can input and edit flight plans without having to resort back to the simulator's main menu, which is, in my opinion, a bit of an immersion killer. If you go for a payware product, you should be able to control everything from the flight deck of that payware product. So it's good that they're including some sort of navigation option inside the flight deck of the aircraft itself. Now, the release date of this aircraft is possibly the most exciting part. It's actually coming in mid-March, which is nearly just two or three weeks away, which is fantastic news. So out of all of the aircraft we've covered today, this is probably the only one that is the soonest um, for the actual release of the aircraft. So it's coming very soon, new toy for us to play with, and I can't be more excited. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so to wrap this video up, let's now talk about the MDs or the Mad Dogs, more specifically the MD-11 and the MD-80 that are being developed for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Starting off with the Mad Dog or the MD-80, the aircraft is being developed by Leonardo Softhouse and it was by far one of the best and most fun to fly aircraft for P3D back when it was released for that simulator. So I'm pretty excited to see it coming from Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 as well. Now, over the past few months, we have seen plenty of footage from the Fly the Mad Dog by Leonardo's Softhouse. We saw a landing and takeoff video, whilst we also saw some more generic footage of the plane in action. However, the latest news is that over on the Leonardo Softhouse forums, lead developer Stefano confirmed that the aircraft is under beta testing and said that things are coming along nicely. He stopped short of confirming any kind of time frame for the planes released, but did add that there will be more details to follow. 
Leonardo Softhouse Fly the Mod Dock for P3D is one of the highest regarded aircraft as I said before, thanks to its realistic flight modeling, system depth, and an array of features that continue to be improved years after its initial release, which means we're going to be reaping the rewards of all of those improvements made over the last few years for P3D. From the footage we've seen so far, the aircraft will bring an excellent rendition of the iconic MD-80 to the world of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Alright, so next up, sticking with the McDonnell Douglas family, we also have some fantastic new pricing information regarding the MD-11 being produced by TFDI Design. So, if you guys don't know TFDI Design, they're the guys who, are, who have produced the uh, Pack-X plugin, the utility for Microsoft Flight Simulator as well. I kind of plan to use that in some of my future videos. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, anyways, so the MD-11 being developed will be fully study level according to an interview with the devs at Flight Sim Expo 2021, which I think occurred in September of 2021 one if I'm not mistaken so very recently they did say that the aircraft will be completely study level. Initial preview images of the aircraft itself uh, are pretty cool you can see some external shots nothing internal yet uh, I hope to see some of those images coming very very soon but the external shots do look good the external modeling looks very very nice. The feature list of course is also indicative of a high fidelity product as you guys can see on screen right now. Now as for the pricing the MD-11 would be released in multiple packs to suit different audience types. This has been reconfirmed by the product page alongside the pricing for each of those packages. I don't really think the TFDI design team wanted to have these uh, prices sort of out for the community, but I guess they got leaked or something, so we have them available. The base pack is listed to cost 89.99 USD. The base pack will either be the passenger or cargo variant. TFDI design is then offering the other variant for customers known as the expansion at a reduced rate of 4 $14.99. This means if you want both the cargo and passenger variants of the MD-11, it will cost you $104.98 in total. On top of that, customers can also choose to buy the extended simulation package for a further $15. With this in mind, you will be able to have the full experience for just shy of $120 US dollars. And I get it, if you're new to the world of flight simulation, these prices might seem insane. In fact, $120 USD is probably double the cost of the simulator package itself. However, this is very very common for high fidelity aircraft. Um, I didn't mention anything regarding the price of the PMDG 737 that we talked about at the beginning of the video, but it's probably going to be assumed near that range as well because it's going to be that high of a simulation experience that you're going to be getting. The extended simulation package, of course, will add operational failures, an advanced custom failures menu, and some circuit breaker functionality as well if you really want to delve into the MD-11. So for those of you looking for the ultimate MD-11 experience, you will want to add this additional package to your suite. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that is all we have for today's video. I am so happy to be back on YouTube. More regular content will be coming very very soon um, a lot of great aircraft coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator guys I'd love to have a conversation with you guys about this on my discord server linked down in the description section of the video so make sure to join it I want to sort of uh, see you guys getting involved there in the comments and everything like that let me know what aircraft you're most excited about as well I'd like to know that some people really like the Airbus aircraft some people really like the Boeing's some people totally don't want either of them and just want to go for the mad dogs or something so let me know which airliner you're most excited about for Microsoft Flight Simulator and also, let me know if I've missed something here. I'd, I'd love to, you know, kind of get enlightened by the community. That's why I'm doing this YouTube thing in the first place. So let me know all of that. Also, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel. I think I said that already. I'm sorry. I have to self-promote. I'm a young channel. And also, uh, make sure to hit that bell icon so you guys can stay notified every time I upload another video. As usual, guys, thanks for flying by.